Anticoagulation Principles, DOAX, Part 2, Kinetics, Drug Interactions and Precautions. Hi again everybody and welcome to another installment of the Farm Easy Tutor. In Part 1 of this three-part lecture series, we introduced the DOAX and talked about their mechanisms of action and indications. Today, we will continue to discuss the DOAX, focusing on their pharmacokinetics, drug interactions, and precautions. Let's compare and contrast the pharmacokinetic parameters of the DOAX. First, let's talk about absorption. Apixaban has a bioavailability of 50 to 60 percent, which is moderate. Rivaroxaban has a dose-dependent bioavailability. What does that mean? Well, for 2.5 milligrams and 10 milligrams, the bioavailability is 80 to 100 percent, which is excellent. However, the bioavailability is reduced to 66 percent at the higher doses of 15 and 20 milligrams when fasting. Food will increase the bioavailability by 39%, improving to greater than 80% in the presence of a meal. Therefore, the higher doses should be taken with the largest meal of the day. The bigot trans bioavailability is very low, roughly 3 to 7%. The bigotrend itself is a highly polarized hydrophilic molecule that is not orally absorbed. The drug is therefore formulated as the lipophilic prodrug the bigotran etexalate, which is absorbed. The ester is then hydrolyzed, forming the bigotran, the active moiety. Absorption of this drug is improved in an acidic environment, so the capsules contain the bigotran etexalate pellets with a tartaric acid core. Peak drug levels for apixaban occur at one to three hours after the dose is taken. For rivaroxaban, two to four hours after the dose is taken, and for the bigotran, one to three hours. What about the effect of food? Apixaban should be taken with or without food. As we stated earlier for rivaroxaban, for the 2.5 and 10 milligram doses, you can take with or without food, but for the 15 and 20 milligram doses, it should be taken with food to increase bioavailability. The bigotran should be taken with or without food and should be taken with a full glass of water. If GI distress occurs, the bigotran should be taken with food. Regarding distribution, apixaban and rivaroxaban have very high protein binding, about 90%, whereas the bigotran has moderate protein binding of 35%. The volume distribution for these DOAX ranges from about 20 to 50 liters. Metabolism. Apixaban is metabolized mainly by CYP3A4. It's a substrate of both CYP3A4, 32%, and PGP. Rivaroxaban is a metabolic substrate of CYP3A4 and 5, about 18%. CYP 2J2 and PJP. The bigotran has minimal CYP metabolism. It's metabolized to four different acyl glucuronides, and both the glucuronides and the bigotran have similar pharmacological activity. It's eliminated by the PGP efflux transporter system. Elimination. Epixaban is primarily hepatically eliminated at 73% and its renal component is 27%. For rivaroxaban, 33% is eliminated as unchanged drug in the urine and 7% in the feces. 51% of the dose is recovered as inactive metabolites in the urine, 30%, and feces, 21%. For dabigatran, it's primarily renally eliminated, about 80%. So when we compare the three DOACs, we can see that apixaban is predominantly hepatically eliminated and dabigatran is primarily renally eliminated and rivaroxaban falls somewhere in between. The half-life of apixaban ranges from 8 to 15 hours, averaging 12 hours. 
For rivaroxaban, in healthy individuals, the half-life is 5 to 9 hours, and in elderly patients, 11 to 13 hours. For dabigatran, the half-life ranges from 12 to 17 hours. Are any of the DOACs dialyzable? Apixaban and rivaroxaban are not dialyzable because of their high protein binding. However, dabigatran is hemodialyzable. Approximately 49% of the total dabigatran can be cleared from plasma over four hours. Initially, DOACs were viewed as having minimal drug interactions, which has now been proven incorrect. When compared with warfarin, which is highly associated with substantial drug-drug interactions, DOACs do impart a lower risk. However, they still have a significant risk of interactions. Most of the DOAC drug interactions involve a drug transporter pump named PGP. PGP is a protein that is located on the cell membrane that pumps foreign substances, substrates, out of the cell. In the diagram, the cell is in orange, and the cell membrane are the small ovals surrounding it. The PGP protein pumps the substrate, usually drugs, out of the cell and into the GI lumen where it is eventually eliminated out of the body. It is an ATP-dependent efflux pump called the P-glycoprotein or PGP efflux system. PGP is extensively distributed and expressed in the intestinal epithelium. PGP is a drug transporter pump found in many tissues, including those of the small intestine. Drug substrates that are involved with PGP are pumped from the walls of the intestinal epithelium back out into the GI tract lumen. This reduces absorption of the drug substrate and increases its elimination out of the body. PGP inducing drugs will accelerate this pump, increasing secretion of the substrate drug into the intestinal lumen and further decreasing absorption of the substrate drug. Likewise, PGP inhibitors will reduce the action of the pump and thus increase tissue and serum levels of drug substrates. Let's start by talking about those DOAC interactions involving effects from the combination of both the PGP transport and CYP enzyme systems. First, the effect of using drugs with combined PGP and strong CYP3A4 inhibition. Examples of these interacting drugs are fluconazole, ketoconazole, itraconazole, erythromycin, except clarithromycin, cobisostat, indinavir, ritonavir, sequinavir, teleprevir, and conivaptan. When these drugs are co-administered with apixaban doses of greater than 2.5 mg BID, the apixaban dose should be reduced by 50%. If the dose is 2.5 mg BID, avoid the use of apixaban. Rivaroxaban should not be used in combination with these drugs as increased exposure occurs, leading to an increased risk of bleeding. What about combined PGP and strong CYP3A4 inducers? Examples of these drugs include rifampin, carbamazepine, phenytoin, St. John's wort, and barbiturates. Apixaban and rivaroxaban should not be used with these drugs as it can lead to decreased exposure and may decrease efficacy. Combined PGP and moderate CYP3A4 inhibitors are drugs such as diltiazem, verapamil, and dronetarone. Apixaban should be used with caution when combined with these drugs, and rivaroxaban should be avoided. One key thing to note is that the bigotran does not require dose modification or avoidance when used with any of the combined PGP and CYP3A4 inhibitors. Why? Because of the bigotran's kinetics, it has minimal CYP metabolism and is primarily renally eliminated. Thus, it avoids these interactions. 
Now let's move on and talk about the DOAC interactions involving only the PGP transport system. First, pure PGP inhibitors such as azithromycin, erythromycin, itraconazole, ketoconazole, quinidine, dronetarone, carbidolol, diltaizem, propafenone, cyclosporin, and tacrolimus. When used with these drugs, the apixaban dose should be reduced or avoided. The bigotran dose should be reduced or avoided depending on the renal function when combined with these drugs. What about PGP inducers? Examples of these drugs include rifampin, carbamazepine, phenytoin, and St. John's wort. Both the pixaban and the bigotran should be avoided when used with PGP inducers since this can lead to reduced exposure of the drug and may decrease efficacy. One additional note is that concurrent use of DOAX with other anticoagulants, antiplatelets, NSAIDs, SSRIs, or SNRIs may increase the risk of bleeding. Contraindications to all three of the DOAX include active bleeding, hypersensitivity to the drug, mechanical prosthetic heart valves, moderate to severe mitral stenosis, and triple positive antiphospholipid syndrome. Severe hepatic impairment is a contraindication only for apixaban and rivaroxaban. Apixaban and rivaroxaban should be avoided in moderate to severe liver impairment, while dabigatran requires no adjustment for liver impairment. Adverse effects of all three DOACs include bleeding, intracranial hemorrhage, hemorrhagic stroke, or GI bleeding, thrombocytopenia, and hypersensitivity reaction. Abdominal pain and GI upset can also occur with rivaroxaban and dabigatran. DOACs should be avoided in pregnancy as treatment may increase the risk of bleeding during pregnancy and delivery. All of the DOACs carry a critical black box warning, which state that, one, there is an increased risk of thrombotic events, stroke, after premature discontinuation of the DOAC, and that, two, spinal or epidural hematoma can occur with neuraxial anesthesia or spinal puncture, so the administration of the DOAC should be delayed. Here is the black box warning for apixaban, showing the danger of premature discontinuation of the drug and the risk of spinal epidural hematoma. General monitoring parameters for DOAX include checking for signs and symptoms of bleeding and drawing CBC, a CMP specifically evaluating liver function tests, albumin, total bilirubin, and serum creatinine monitoring. Routine anticoagulation laboratory monitoring of DOAX is usually not required. However, it can be considered in cases of bleeding, surgery, or compliance concern. For apixaban and rivaroxaban, an anti-factor 10A level or pro-time can be used to monitor the drugs. For dabigatran, the APTD test provides an approximation of dabigatran's anticoagulant effect. Thrombin time can also be used. Switching from a DOAC to another anticoagulant, or vice versa, may be necessary due to cost, comorbid conditions, patient's preference and compliance, hospitalization, thrombotic complications, bleeding complications, or procedures. First, let's talk about cases where we will be switching to a DOAC. When switching from warfarin to a DOAC, DC the warfarin and wait until the INR drops to less than 2 for pixaban and dabigatran and less than 3 for rivaroxaban. When switching from another anticoagulant other than warfarin to a DOAC, in general, start the DOAC around the time of the next dose of the anticoagulant. Refer to the table for the exact times. What about situations where you need to switch the DOAC to warfarin or to another anticoagulant? When switching from a DOAC to warfarin, it's important to remember that the DOAC can affect the INR. For apixaban and rivaroxaban, start warfarin and bridge with parenteral anticoagulant until the INR is greater than or equal to 2. For dabigatran, 
start warfarin and DC dibigatran one to three days after, depending on the creatinine clearance. When switching from a DOAC to another anticoagulant other than warfarin, in general, start the anticoagulant around the time of the next dose of the DOAC. Refer to the table for the exact times. When patients require surgery or other interventions, DOACs in general should be DC'd one to two days prior and possibly longer for dibigatran. Refer to the table for the exact recommendations. Summary. In part two, we compared and contrasted the absorption, metabolism, and renal excretion of the three main DOACs. We outlined the key drug-drug interactions that DOACs are involved with and discussed the PGP transport system. We reviewed the major warnings, precautions, and adverse effects of using DOACs, and we described how to switch DOACs to another anticoagulant and vice versa. Coming up next in part three of this three-part series on the DOACs, we will explain how to counsel a patient taking DOACs, describe the use of DOAC antidotes in cases of severe life-threatening bleeding, and outline the dosage and proper procedures in the preparation of idarucizumab and andexanet. So stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in to watch this installment of the PharmEasy Tutor. I hope you learned something that you could use at school or in practice. If you would like to continue to see more of these types of tutorials on YouTube, please make sure to click on the black subscribe button below to change it to the word subscribed. Also, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you can click on the thumbs up icon below to change the color to black. Also, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to add them in the comment section below or share this site with someone else. Stay tuned to the Farm Easy Tutor channel for more lectures in the upcoming weeks. So until next time, remember to take it easy.